Hey everyone, this is Pete, and welcome back to Atari A to Z, a series of short playthroughs of Atari 8-bit games, some of which I grew up with and some which are new to me. Today is one of the latter. Today we're looking at Karmic Caverns. This was a 1983 release from PMI, developed by Len Dorfman. The game marketed itself as a 100% machine language arcade style game that will entertain you hour after hour in which you must find your way through the maze-like caverns, avoiding the deadly plasmatic guards, not to mention the electrified walls, and acquire as many energy pods as you can. There doesn't seem to be a lot of other information online about this game. PMI appears to have been a Florida-based company who was specifically seeking contributions from programmers who made games and applications that were both, in their words, technically sophisticated and user-friendly. Their other titles at the time included Sword Point, a game in which you lived the life of, your, of a young man in the 17th century Europe-inspired Simmer Franconia, a country of totally masculine values where style supersedes substance, and Wampir's Tomb, a game which promised to challenge your bravery, your intelligence and your cunning, but also take you beyond your imagination into a realm of new and exciting forces where only legends survive. Of all PMI's releases in the period, Karmic Caverns was the most expensive, retailing for $34.95. So, let's go see if it was worth it. Let's go play Karmic Caverns. Okay, here we are with Karmic Caverns by Len Dorfman from 1983. We begin with a lovely high-resolution title screen, uh, which is nice. This would be in, what is it, graphics 8, I think. It's just 320 by 200 by two colours. And into the game proper. We're using one of the color graphics modes. Okay, so this is a rather odd little platform game in which you control the little blue dude up at the top there. Uh, the little blue dude can climb up ladders but not down them. Um, and so in order to get down the screen, you have to fall, but not too far, because this is an early platform game where falling too far can kill you. Uh, those purple walls are electrified and will kill you. And all of the light blue moving things will kill you as well. There is also a time limit. And, uh, yeah, that's about it. So your aim is to make it to that little blue rectangle up in the top right corner. That is an energy pod, or whatever it was called. Uh, and your aim is simply to collect as many of those as possible before you inevitably cark it. So it's relatively straightforward to begin with. It's all about observing the patterns that the enemies are moving in and making sure you don't put yourself in a position where you're helpless while well, they're incoming. Oh, that was silly. We didn't want to go that way. Uh, we want to go back down. Is that going to kill us? No. Okay. We want to go up this way. So you see, there's, there's sort of a puzzle element to this game where you have to be aware of the limitations on your character's movement. And plan your route through the level accordingly. And now we've got to get back to the start and go and grab an energy pod from over there as well. And again, you'll notice because of the restrictions on your movement, Getting back requires you to take a different route to the one you took to actually get to the pod in the first place. Uh oh. And again, you'll need to pay close attention to what all the enemies are doing. Whoops! And figure out a way to go that's not going to kill you. Unfortunately, there is an occasional bug in this game where sometimes when you climb a ladder it stops just a pixel too early um, and unfortunately that means that you can't walk along the platform which is very annoying <laughs> especially when you've gone all the way through the level and you're on your way back like we just had there 
But yeah, you see, you see there, we're actually on the, the bottom pixel of that platform rather than the top one. And that means we can't climb that next ladder. Now, fortunately, in that case, we could just walk off the side of the platform and climb up again. But you can't always rely on that. So you do just need to keep a careful eye on what you're doing and how you're moving. Yeah, see, there, again. I can't use that ladder because I'm on the bottom pixel of that platform, so I have to go back down, all the way around. And up again. And this time it works. Oh, I've done it again. I've done the wrong thing again. I didn't even need to climb that ladder in the first place. Oh no! Well, again. So, I quite like this game in principle. In that it's a sort of more cerebral take on the platformer. And I, I like the, the deliberate limitations on your mobility. Because that turns each level into an interesting traversal puzzle. I think the problem is that it, it just starts off a bit too lengthy. Like, this is the first level, and it's very long. And it's not giving you any sort of sense of immediate gratification or reward or anything like that. You don't get points for how far you get. You only get points when you reach the, the energy pod. And also... Oh. Oh. Well, that's interesting. Okay, so we can grab those. They give us points. Did not know that. Okay, that changes everything. Alright, so there are ways of getting points other than grabbing the big energy pod. Then you can grab the small energy pods as well. I thought those were bullets because I played Jumpman. <laughs> right, now... My question is, bearing in mind what we've seen so far, is this it? Are there any other levels, is a big question I have on my mind at the minute. Or does it just keep playing on this one level, you rotate around, it maybe gets a bit faster? I don't know. And I don't know if we're going to be able to find that out. But let's let's give it a good, honest effort, anyway. Let's try and wait, make our way back to the beginning. Have some more of the little pods on the way. Now we know that we can... Get some extra points from them. Oh no! No! We've got that glorious old-fashioned Atari 8-bit collision detection there, where if even a single pixel of your sprite overlaps uh, something else, then you are dead. Dead, I tell you. over here is fairly straightforward. It's getting back that is the tricky bit. 
So yeah, like, like I say, I, I like elements of this game in principle. Oh dear. Please turn. Please turn. Go away. Thank you. Yeah, I like elements of this game in principle. I like I like the fact that it's a traversal puzzle. Um, but I think it should have it should have started a little bit more gently with maybe a shorter, easier level to get the player into what's going on. It should be a bit clearer that those things are things you can collect and not bullets. Maybe put them in a different colour or something. Or make them flash or something like that. Uh oh. Alright, we good. I'll have that, thank you very much. Okay, we gotta drop all the way down to the bottom here. I guess so. Yep. And climb all the way up here. Grab this one. And then we have to go all the way back again. So it's looking to me like this is the only level. And simply what you have to do... No, oh no! It's score as many points as possible using the lives you've got and the amount of time you have available to you. So in that sense, it's almost designed with kind of the same philosophy as some of the early 2600 games, where you were given a simple static playfield and a specific time limit in which to score as much as you could. But I guess there, mu there must be a theoretical maximum on how much you can achieve, because... I mean, even if you don't make a mistake, getting to the getting to the energy pod and back again takes up more than half of your complete amount of time available. So even if you play perfectly, there must be a theoretical maximum number of points you can get in this game. After which you can't really achieve anything else. Where are you going? Go away. Oh, out of time. Hmm. Okay. Let's have one more try. And just see if we can get there and back and there again. And see if that does anything to the speed of things. It's like I say, if, there, if there's just one level in this that feels oh, I've done it again if there's just one level that feels like a kind of a glaring omission <laughs> in giving the game some long term appeal and you have to remember I, I was quoting directly from the advertisements in the introduction where they were saying this is an arcade style game that will keep you busy for hours and hours and hours if there's only one level it's not going to keep you busy for hours and hours and hours is it You're eventually going to master what it has to offer and think, well, I've done that game now. I've seen everything that game has to offer. And, like, the, the construction of levels in a game like this is not a complicated process it's not a particularly memory intensive process or anything like that it's simple use of the a redefined character set in most cases so it's not like a memory intensive 
image file or a bitmap or anything like that. It's redefined characters that you can just position around the screen with relatively minimal memory usage. And when you consider that there were typing listings from magazines running in basic that had multiple levels, multiple platform game levels like this, and they were just free. You could, you could just type them in from a magazine and have them for free. And this cost $34.95 in 1983, which is a lot of money. I don't have an inflation calculator to hand, but that's... Well, I mean, it's probably the price of a, a full-price modern video game. Which is a little ridiculous if this is all this game has to offer. Particularly when you bear in mind the other two games that I mentioned, which both sound considerably more complex and interesting than this one. I... I sound like I'm shitting on this game, but I'm playing this, I am enjoying it. But I'm enjoying it in a sort of kind of hypnotic zen sort of way. Shit. Once you've nailed the route through the level, you're very much sort of going through the motions. Don't. Thank you. At least it does seem to have had the decency to provide some safe spots. So you don't get into a position where um, you have something chasing you and there's nothing you can do about it. Because you can't duck, you can't jump, nothing like that. It does seem that if you retreat from an enemy, you will eventually find yourself at a safe spot where they will move away from you. Oh no! Unsafe spot! Unsafe spot! So yeah, there's, there's some elements of, of nice design in here and some thoughtful game design and a somewhat different take on the platform game to what you usually have at the time. But there's, there's just not enough of it, is the thing. And I'm not... The sort of person who's like, oh, this game is too short, there's a lack of content and that sort of thing. But, you know, one, one level, one level in a full price commercial piece of software in the 80s doesn't really cut it for me. But, well, it is what it is. And nothing we can do about it now. Still, this has been interesting to look at. It's not a game I'd heard of before. Probably, there's probably a reason for that. Um, but like I say, it's, it's competently put together and thoughtfully designed. It, it just needs fleshing out. There needs to be more of it. There needs to be more levels. There needs to be greater variety in enemies. There needs to be some sort of sense of escalating challenge. Because as it stands... Um, yeah, you, you exhaust the possibilities of that game quite quickly. Can't press select or option or anything to choose different levels or anything. You press select to pause. And apparently... Yes. And then the fire button to unpause. And that's it. That's all there is to this game. Um, so yeah, I have kind of mixed feelings about that, but... I mean, it's enjoyable enough for a few minutes, but I think I'd have felt a bit shortchanged if I'd spent $34.95 on that back in 1983. Ah, <laughs> uh, oh well. Anyway, that is Karmic Caverns. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you again next time.